Salut les amis! Today I'm taking part in the writing rituals tag that was created by Mandy Lin and Kim Chance. Thank you for having me in your writing party. Question one. When do you write? Time of day and day of week. If I had some sort of schedule, I could probably speak about this more. Generally, I try and write every day between normal work hours, which is like eight to five or six. But when I wrote my first book, I was doing pitch wars, which meant that I was on deadlines and 24 hour writing shifts. And the writing of my second project has sort of been all over the place where I'd write for one day and then do absolutely nothing for a whole week. I'm really trying to get into a habit of writing daily on a schedule because I really think it's the healthiest thing for me as an author, but I have struggled big time with discipline. The only thing that seems to motivate me is external deadlines like Camp NaNoWriMo or the Pitchwars deadline. And if you don't meet that deadline, you don't get in. Question two, how do you seclude yourself from the outside world? I would love to seclude myself from the outside world because that would mean I wouldn't be constantly distracted by really cute cats climbing all over my desk, lying down on top of my keyboard, lying down on top of my arms so that my hands can't reach the keyboard. Really nice dogs attacking things, each other, me, anything that they can find. Animals constantly needing to be fed. Basically, I don't seclude myself. I like to work around my husband, so I like it best when we are both in the living room. He's creative, he does music. Unless, of course, people have invaded our house. If people have invaded our house for whatever reason, or we have family or friends staying over for more than just a day, where I don't have to be polite and look after them, then I have to go on the study, on the study, in the study, on the landing, and put some headphones in and try and work. Thing is, where I come from, people just walk in the door and start talking to you. Often they see that you're working and they're like, are you busy? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, great, let's chat. So secluding yourself can be super hard. I think it's necessary, but I think this is the struggle of all freelancers to get uh, people to understand that just because you don't go into an office for nine to five doesn't mean that you don't have nine to five work to complete and the world to take over. Three, how do you review what you wrote the previous day? Well, usually when I come down to my writing, I always want to read what I read the day before out of procrastination and sheer just like, oh, that's interesting. It means not having to write new words if I'm reading this because I can call it work. So the question is not how do I review the work I did the previous day? The question is when will I stop reviewing what I did the previous day? I don't need to read it 10 times, okay? Get to work. Question four. What's four? One, two, three, four. Dyslexia. Four. What song is your go-to when you're feeling uninspired? I actually don't write to music. I sometimes have music which I consider a bit of a playlist or gets me into the mood for writing. I barely even listen to it though. And it's all um, instrumental. It's all classics or movie soundtracks. There's no actual like singers singing words in that music. So when I feel uninspired, my go-to thing is listening to myself say, stop being a loser and get something done because otherwise you're gonna feel bad about it every day, every hour, every day, all the time. Question five. What do you always do when you find yourself struggling with writer's block? This is going to be highly, highly controversial. I'm sorry if you get offended by what I say. I don't believe in writer's block as far as I'm concerned. I can suffer from laziness, procrastination, lack of motivation, uh, lack of discipline, all of the things. I can be struggling when a scene is not as easy to write, or there is a plot problem and I don't know what it is, or there is some sort of issue either in what I'm trying to do, or I feel confused on the level of what this draft is trying to do, or I feel like I'm not in control of my drafting in general. So it can be a deep nitty gritty writing problem and that confuses me, especially as a dyslexic. I have trouble with those craft things where people are like, this is what each scene needs to do and everything needs to fit into this little box and you write it out and then everything is fine. My mind doesn't work like that. So I can struggle with what I'm currently writing and that can make me be unmotivated and not want to write it. 
when I find myself struggling with writer's block, I have to sit down and try and figure out what the problem is and what I can do to solve it. If I can't see and identify what the problem actually is, I generally first will go to my husband who knows me really well and is not a writer, but he is a creative and he becomes a sounding board and he very quickly can recognize what's wrong with me. Otherwise, I have my best writing buddies, my writing wife or my CPs or my author friends who are much further in their writing careers and they can often advise me about what's actually the problem and how I should actually deal with it because they've been through it and they've seen all their writer friends go through it as well. So they've got great advice. Find yourselves a mentor like Jack Donaghy. Six, what tools do you use when you're writing? I write on a Mac. I write in Scrivener because Scrivener is amazing and Word is from the devil. And with Scrivener, you will never have to scroll again. So I have a diary, which is a moleskin. Well, I had one, but then my dog Moriarty ate it and swallowed all of the leather, which says a lot about the health of his digestive tract, but never mind. I walk around with that diary at all times and I jot things into it, especially in places where it would seem really rude to pull out a phone. I'm like, I'm just writing in my diary, which looks way more official and work-like and less like, I've just had this random idea for my book and you're not important, so I'm gonna write it down now and you can't judge me because it's work. Leave me alone. I always have a pen in my diary not a fancy pen because I would lose it or my dog would eat it so I can't have nice things. Seven! What's the one thing you can't live without during a writing session? I don't snack so this is why this is difficult for me and I don't usually get up to go and get a drink because I always make sure I've got my drink beforehand so I suppose a drink it's very difficult like Scrivener if I didn't have Scrivener I might die and my happiness might explode leaving a massive seething wormhole in the middle of the earth that would swallow from the inside into a parallel dimension and bring on the apocalypse or not which sort of leads into seven seven five six seven seven are we at seven i don't even know what number we're at anymore how do you fuel yourself during your writing session i've already said i don't eat during writing it's also because um, I'm not well, so I'm on this very sad, restrictive diet called the GAPS diet, so the only thing I can snack on is fruit, which is probably good for my writing discipline. It's very early in my writing journey. And if I started by eating like sweets and trashy foods, now I'd probably get used to that, and every book I ever wrote, I would need to eat those things. So I should be grateful, but mostly I'm just sad because I can't eat donuts and cake and delicious, delicious things. And when I do something good, I can have an apple, maybe, a baked apple, baked in honey and cinnamon, which is nice, unless you compare it to chocolate cake or creme caramel. I sometimes take breaks between writing to eat some sort of fruit and I just drink non-stop. Gotta stay hydrated with the agua, tea and or coffee. And that's all because my life is a sad and empty shell. 17. I don't even know numbers anymore. How do you know when you're done writing? Uh, I'm generally done writing when my husband is like, it's past midnight, I'm going to sleep now. And he just looks at me. And I know that I need to go to sleep. True story, I am an insomniac and have been since I was a child. I am a night owl and I write best at night. Sadly, this doesn't do well with my current autoimmune and it doesn't do well for living a normal life with people and family who, you know, have normal routines and don't stay up till 7 a.m. writing and doing things like that. When I'm on a writing roll, I legit do not want to stop. All I want to do is write. I don't need to eat. I don't need to sleep. I don't need to talk to anyone. I don't even know what showering is. Why would anyone shower? That's not a thing. The question for me becomes more, how do other people manage to get you to stop? Which is usually through coercion or emotional blackmail. Being married and being ill has been really good for the tiny weeny little bit of discipline that I've got. Because if it wasn't for that, I would very easily succumb to a nocturnal 24-7 writing binge habit and would never leave the house and would never eat. Or I would just eat lots of cake, but let's not go there because I'm always thinking about cake because I just can't eat it and I'm sad inside my heart. I die of it every day. So this was super fun. Thank you so much to Kim for tagging me and I hope that you go and check out all of the other fancy people that are tagged in her video thing. 
I've never done a tag before. I don't really know what I'm talking about. I had to Google writing tags on YouTube. 